Thank you very much. Hi, Carlos. Um, firstly, how are you? You were absent on Saturday. Are you all okay? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much to ask. Everything is okay. It was something more related with something positive than with something to be worried. But unfortunately, I couldn't be in the stadium. But it's true that I was following the, the game like in the previous situation when I had COVID because I could be watching on live. And even that time was exactly in the right moment. No delayed one minute back. So I was watching the game <laughs> in the same minute of my, or the same second of my staff. So never, it's not the same to don't be in the stadium, but I think it was a, a positive experience that, I, that we did. Uh, at the same time, for me, I appreciate a lot every message of support of the of the people. So I couldn't be, always a pity for me as a head coach to cannot be in the stadium, but the, the reasons in the back made me impossible to be there. But is there anything to be worried? And from tomorrow, I will be in the in the stadium. I am here in the training from yesterday. That was the first training of the of the group. Good to hear it was positive, and your uh, you weren't you didn't have a delay on your feed. Um, what 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 did you make to the side then? Listening to uh, uh, Danny after the game, he was obviously pleased progressing, but he he maybe felt the side invited a little bit of pressure to Barnsley in the second half. Is that? something you agree with and then something you've worked on a little bit the last couple of days? Mm, no, something that we work, always we work how we are facing the, the game. And it's true that for me, the first half was enough good to can go to the red, to the half time with, a, with a, maybe a better result. And in the, in the second half, in some moments, we allow them to take a little bit control of the game. You always recover the control of the game when you recover the ball and you start to create things with the ball. For me, we were managing in the first half excellent the ball. In the second half, they were switching the shape. And sometimes the switch of shape affects a little bit you. The fact that you don't recognize well where are going to be the spaces. Because for me, the playing out in the first half or the building up was a more advantage play building up, for example, with three in the first line of the building of the attack, uh, plus one percent midfielder. And in the second half, when they were switching the shape, for me, it was better to make the building up with four players. So sometimes from you are watching something to you pass the message to the players. And they are starting to understand and recognize the spaces. Always take time, and this is the challenge. Try to reduce that time, based in the immediate adaptation of the players to the new scenario of the game. Is something that is going to happen. Is that something that affects to every team in the world? But for me, the team was adaptive with the pass of the minutes, and we start even we create some more chances in some part of the second half. But for me, the team was playing better the first half than the second half, defending a little bit more in the second half. But even in the second half, with options to come make a better result. And with a little bit of point or set demanding to don't put in any moment the result on risk. It, as well, Danny, uh, there's a lot of praise for Josh Ruffles, John Russell, who came into the side. Do you, do you feel your side is as complete as it can be at this stage of the season now the windows have closed? And how satisfying is it when you see those players who maybe don't regularly play in the league, come in and, and put in a very good performance? Yes, for me, it's not easy when you are not being regularly first 11 player, first starting player, not first 11, or not in the first 11, to go to the first 11 and to, and to prove that you can be ready. I don't have any of doubt. I am full of confidence of every player in, in, the, in the squad. That's why I told you that many times I am being unfair because it's not only the fact that one player is proving that it's a good option is the fact that sometimes you have another player in the same position that is showing that it's a good player to, to, to play. But that's why for me always is a challenge. It's true that the cup is a competition uh, where, you can, where you can have the possibility for me to, to grow the squad, being competitive team, and to use these type of games to put the more competitive player that you have. And that's why I think that we have a very good group of players with a very good dynamic mentality and for me with a lot of uh, possibilities to give option during the season. One season in Champions is too long. We are still, we don't know which things, we adversity, which type of challenge we are going to face. And what for me is very important to have every player ready to help Huddersfield in the best way that they can help. Good stuff. Um, go, going back to that game, I'd, I just want to pick up on a, a few team news aspects ahead of tomorrow's trip to Preston. Um, one, any any fresh concerns, and two, in particular, how's how's Peter after having to come off after the first thirty minutes? Uh, after he was feeling an injury, he was doing a, a yesterday one scan with the doctors of the club, 
and the result of the scan is positive. So it means that we are known to miss him for a long time. As soon as he starts to stop his symptoms, he will restart with the group. I hope that can be the faster that we can. We don't know exactly the time because it depends how he's progressing with the doctors of the club. But if he's not against Sheffield, he will be in the next week with the team. He's not going to be available uh, to play against Preston. It's a question mark against Sheffield and it's a possibility against Fulham. But everything is going to depend because in the previous weeks, I told you one time table that after the player couldn't respect or couldn't adapt to this time table. But this is the first uh, news that I have from, from him. Okay, so the, the initial conclusion must be a relief given how long he's been out before, but this time it may only be a couple of weeks. I hope that be less, but it's true that as soon as you don't feel a, an important injury, it's a very positive news for, for us as a squad. Carol, I think he, he managed an hour after starting. How, how did you rate Carol and is he, is he close to a league start? Uh, he was starting the other day. It means that he can be a starting player. Every player that was starting the other day, I understand that can be a starting player. Uh, starting talking from that's why they were playing because for us it was a competitive game and I understand that the players that were playing the other day were in a better conditions to be a starting players. The keeper blaming because it's important to have uh, the second keeper ready because for me the skills of the second keeper need to be the same skills of the first choice keeper. Uh, Linicos is making unbelievable for me performances during all the season and it's important to have the second keeper with the same possibilities and ready just in case uh, something can happen or we need to have the second keeper ready and the second keeper for me need to be someone with the same personality and skills that the first, not the first keeper and for me with Blama we have achieved this after uh, Pipa is a player that has been first 11 player in, in, against Reading for example he is not being first 11 players because the injury don't allow him to to, to be at the beginning of the season or now stop a little bit his progress. I always said that for me, Rufus is one player that can be in the first 11 player because for me, he has all the skills to, to help the team. Sal has been in the first 11. Matty Pearson was have been many times in the first 11 of the team. Russell has been in the first 11 in the previous game cup. And for me, the other day, and plus some uh, time from the bench, and this is for me very important as a young player to continue growing and to continue showing that you can help the team. Uh, 18 is going to be one of the, for me, important players uh, because he has been, he will be continue being an important player. Uh, after Holmes is being in the first 11, was in the first 11, is continue being in the first 11. Uh, Roach is one player that have him been helping the team a lot from the, the game of Nottingham Forest where he was having more minutes, starting from the, uh, from more playing from the bench. But in the last two cup games, he was a starting player because for me, he has the possibility to be two. That's why he are in the club to help us and improve our option in the strikes. Coroma has been many times in the first 11 and Sorba too. So we were playing with full of first players, first team players, that all of them can be in the first 11 of the team. On, on Dwayne Holmes, you mentioned him then. Three goals in his last six games. Just how important is Dwayne Holmes to your attack? How, how much has he become important to your side? Every time the players are proving that they are helping the team with the main responsibilities that depend about the position they have, for me, they, they are proving that they are important players. I think that always in football have to be the fact that you are playing the first 11 have to be the consequence of something that you deserve to be. And you deserve to be with a good dynamic and good performances. And I think Holmes is one player that is showing regularly that his mind is very focused in, in, in the game where he's playing. He wasn't first 11 player at the beginning of the season or in the, first, in the second part of the first part of the season. And but with his contribution from the bench and his, for me, personality in the training and determination in the training to be a first an important player, he's, he's, of course, he's making a very good impact uh, to the team. So everything that he's achieving is because he deserves, because he's working to achieve. Some tough games on paper, albeit Carlos coming up, Preston, Sheffield United, Fulham. Do, do you look at this upcoming period? It could be a real vital period in the rest of your season. No, I, I was. I don't expect to have one game different than any of, the, any of the games that you will mention. I think in the Championship, every game has this, the same. There is something com, common, it's common in every game of the Championship that you know before you play that is going to be a high challenge that is going to need from you to be with a high level of 
concentration and determination to compete. And this is exactly what I am with expecting tomorrow. We are going to play against one team that for me is very competitive uh, because for me, the squad that they have and the work that, of course, with the new coach, they are doing too. So I was, yeah, I, I just expect one very competitive championship game that is going to demand from us again the best level that we can that we can show to be a competitive team. I asked Jonathan this question um, when I when I read championship websites or listen to podcasts. A lot of people tend to write off Huddersfield Town. They they're not really in the playoff conversation. Still, does it does it suit you being an underdog? I don't care, or I don't mind. I don't know about any of these type of things. I only care to come perform tomorrow in a very challenging game to try to be the best that we can be in the best type of situation that we are going to play and to try to show that we are a competitive team. And I understand these type of things that are normal in football, but uh, are things that are not going to change any single detail of how we prepare the game and how we face the competition. And then on to tomorrow, obviously a 1-0 win for your side against Preston earlier this season, but they've changed managers since then. Their, their results have improved. It will be a completely different test for your side than it was earlier in the season. Exactly, totally agree with you, because the moment of both teams are different, the players that are playing now, maybe the, the shape is similar, because even with the switch of the coach, they are playing in the similar or the same shape. But it's true that we never are going to find two teams in the same way, even if we play three days later. Perfect. Good luck for tomorrow, Carlos. Thanks Thank for your time. Much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Louis. Stephen, we'll come to you. Hi, Carlos. Um, how's, uh, I know he won't be available this week, but is Levi Colwell still on, on track with his injury? No, the idea with him is that he has started to be part of the squad after the game of Sheffield United. Yeah, okay. Still on track for that. Yeah, then. Yes. Cool. cool. Um, and, and are there any other new doubts for, for this week other than Pippa at all? Uh, about Pippa? Other than Pippa. Uh, ah, no, 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 sorry. No, 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 no. We don't have any update. I am thinking right now, no. The situation with the squad, the only player that we missed from the previous game is Pippa. And now we are going to have the same group of players available. The only change is true that two of the players that were involved or one of the players that was involved the other day in the squad is not going to be because the number of players that we have is less. So we will miss Pipa plus another player to create a group of 18 players that can travel to be involved in the in the game. In the cup competition, we have two players more than usually in the regular competition. Okay. I mean, when it comes to selecting your bench, do you like to have... Um, specialists on the bench, players like John Russell, maybe who who offer something different. I think it's good to have a player that you know that can make an impact from the bench. And then uh, the better group of players we have, the more options as a coach you have in the bench. And then that's why I told you that I am happy with the group of players that we have, and it's important that we make grow every single player because the more we grow as a squad, the more possibilities you can have from the bench to can change one game. And after in the event, you need to have for me one balance because if every player is a defender, even if the game demands you to attack, you cannot make any offensive change. And you have every team attacking player, everyone attacking, and the, the game demands you one central back because you have one injury. You don't have a central back, you cannot play one striker as a central back. So at the end, for me, there is a two points, the balance in the squad, in the balance in the events, in terms of the positions, and the possibility for me and the growing of the players then the decision that you make in terms of the position that you need in the bench, you know that they are going to be in the best condition that they can be to help the team in the highest point that they can help. Is there also an element, so like when you pick your first 11, you're looking at what the opposition might might do and you're looking at you know their strengths and weaknesses. Is it the same when you're looking at a bench? Is it a case of thinking we might need something different We might, or we might need more? You know, How does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's exactly like this. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult because you need to anticipate scenarios that you don't know if they are going to happen or not. But this is why in the Champions League we need to do. In the Premier League, for example, the number of subs players that you can use is exactly the same in the Premier League than in the Championship. But in the Premier League, you can have two players more from the bench. For me, this fact increases your possibilities to impact one game because you are going to have more possibilities than when you only have six players, six pitch players from the bench. So for me, 
are important to think is that the player from the bench, for me, the more is posi it's positive that they can give you more than one position because then you are going to cover all the possibilities of one game. This is the balance that we are talking, and especially to have a good level of players are going to increase the impact that they can make from the bench. But it's true that all these things make that the strategy when you prepare one game is not only from the first 11, it's from the bench too. Yeah, and Aaron Rowe has been playing a lot of B-team football recently. Is that just a case of trying to get minutes into him? Yes, because for me it's important that he recover his level. He was missing a lot of time and he has to recover his level, his fitness levels, his football levels, his, his mentality, his game mentality, because it's not the same when you are playing or when you are not playing. And we want to use sometimes the B-team games to increase the possibility of the player to help after the first team and to show in these type of games that they deserve to be in the first, in the first team and that they prove that they can be a very good option to the first team. And sometimes the option with the B team is a little bit unfair because sometimes we watch only the sometimes the strikers or the goals that they are scoring. And for me, we are analyzing the performances that they are doing every time that they are playing one beating game. And there's a... Maybe a feeling that, that we've not seen the best of Jonathan Hogg since he's come back from injury. Do you feel he's working towards being more like the player we're used to seeing? No, I don't think so. I think that, uh, of course, the first game that he was playing was a, a high challenge because it was a long time without play. But every time that he was in the pitch, for me, I was watching him a little bit better and helping more and showing more his skills. Because for me, Hogg is an unbelievable player in defense and he's a player with a high level of personality in attack too. So and Hogg is someone that even when he tries to do something and the action is not working, he has enough personality to keep doing something. And this is one value that is very important to have as a player. Because in football not every action is going to be success when you try to do the things. And the file, the failure of the action, the failure, the no success of the action, the uh, failure. The failure. Yeah of the act, the failure of the action, sometimes can stop you to try to do things that at the end, the game is going to demand you. And for me, Hoggy, I find a player with one level of personality that is very, very, very high. And I'm very pleased to have him in the team. Cool. That's all for me. Thanks, Carlos. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Steve. Stuart. Hi, Carlos. You, you always talk about your players being self-demanding. That's uh, something you always want from them. Do you think the last couple of weeks have, have helped that even more? The fact that you've got these extra midfielders in, the fact that the, the, the team played well in the cup is just giving you more options. Does that, does that help to motivate the players more? Can be one option to increase the motivation to the players too, but shouldn't be one option to increase the self demand of the players either. Because for me, you can know uh, if you need some external aspect to increase your possibilities means that you are not self-demanding. For me, this is the difference between to be self-demanding or external demanding. If I always think that if you need to push someone to do something, it's because he doesn't have the patience enough to do something or determination enough to do something. And if you don't have determination enough to do something, means that uh, you are not going to, to extend this, this, extend this type of behaviors in, in your life. If we talk about football, if you need to push one player to, to run, it means that in a short time he's going to stop to run. And if the football demand or need their running, it's going to be a high challenge for him to, to extend his career in football. That's why I think the, this is the difference between the demanding or the self-demanding. We don't have to demand ourselves because someone push or provoke the press, we need to be the first one that we are self-demanding. That's why we always try to correct the games with no analyzing the result, analyzing what we do in the pitch. Because the better things we do, or the best in the best way we do the things, the more options we are going to have to, to be a competitive team. That this is what as a team we need to demand too. And in terms of um, Jonathan Hogg in particular, you talked about his special personality. Is he a more is he unusual nowadays in being so demanding of his other teammates? Is that is that skill almost becoming less less obvious in the game? Uh... I think it's true that if you have one group of players that all of them, anyone need the push or the message of anyone to try to go to the limits, you need less because they don't need this type of message. 
if you have one group of players that they need the push, you will need more the leader character. But I think I am not watching this year the need of, of push a lot the, the player. It's true that we have young players, still young players in the in the group with maybe not enough long-term experience in the championship. But at the same time, we have a group of players with a lot of experience that can be Hawk, one of them, can be Tony's, that is going to be one of the players with more minutes in the championship. If he continue playing like this or performing or, or being in the first level or in the, in the minute that he's having. So at, at the same time, I think that this type of experience help a lot, not from the demanding point of view, more from the manage of the different situations that any player need to face. But for example, I can tell you that the last year before to the games, I remember that uh, I was listening my voice a lot in the dressing room. It was the habit that I have. And this year, many times, I think that I am someone that I am listening more the voice of the team of my players than my voice. And it means that they are very, very focused to, to be a competitive team. And I tell you something that the day that we start to do this, this day will start to, we will start to have a bad performances, no defeats or, or winnings, because sometimes we are taking points. Uh, when you don't deserve or with a little bit point of lucky and sometimes you miss points deserving the three points but it's true that for me it's very important as a team that we continue to be that team that is so so self-demanding and they go to the games with a lot of with a high level of determination to to achieve the three points and, and do you think that mentality is the most important reason it why you managed to go 12 games unbeaten because even even the most talented sides struggle to find that consistency especially in the championship there is something in football that when we say that something is the most important thing after i want to play something to tell us that it wasn't the most important thing because at the end everything is very important if we put the characters in front of the skills of the players we can make a mistake if we put the skills of the players in front of the characters we can make we can have a mistake and we can be wrong. So for me, there are many aspects that are going to be very important in the positive performances of the team. Because sometimes the performances are not results. And in, form in football, performances are not results, or results are not performances. Our dream and our work is to try to make the results the consequences of our positive, positive result consequence of a positive work and positive performances. So for me, if we analyze uh, the performances, I was now missing a little bit about the, the question that you did because I churned a little bit. But can you repeat me just to please to give right. you the... Yeah, so I was just asking how, how important that mentality you talked about was exactly. behind the consistency. So at the end, without mentality, you cannot be consistent. You cannot be consistent in the league. Without skills, you cannot be consistent you cannot play well with football. Without attacking possibilities you are not going to it's going to be a challenge to be consistency winning the games without defensive skills you are not going to be consistency for me to win in the games so for me at the end it's more important attack well and defense well everything in the football is important because if you are doing a mixing work in the minute 90 you have one set piece and only you decrease the intensity in this action and you lose the game tell me the set pieces are important or not to the result of the game so at the end it shows you that in football Every single detail for me it can be key, can be decisive to take the three points. I remember the action of Danny Ward that allowed us to give the three points the, against Reading when he scored the, the fourth goal. Previous to the finishing of him, that was an unbelievable finishing with the right foot, there was one long ball. If he doesn't challenge for this long ball, the option of Danny Ward to win to want that long ball, area long ball, was low. He was winning the area challenge. The ball arrived to Coroma. Coroma couldn't control the ball. The ball arrived to Danny Ward, and Danny Ward made the finishing. Where start the goal of Danny Ward? In the aerial challenge that he did after one clearance. If no, the Danny Ward goal doesn't appear. So that's why I think that what is more important than anything, everything in the football is important. And every action can be the key action. Like we don't know which action is going to be the key action. We need to face every action with the highest level of importance and responsibility and attention or concentration. Because one simple action can be a very important action. With the aspect of football, it's exactly the same. The mentality is important, of course. Attack is important, of course. Defense is important, of course. The set piece is important, of course. The throwing are important, of course. The play now is important. Every single thing. And the more aspects you dominate, 
the more aspects you control, the more things you are going to have to perform well. Great. Thank you very much, Carlos. Good luck at the rest of